Hi, I'm Krista Wilson. Um, I have been a foster parent for 21 years. My husband and I were presented with uh, the opportunity to foster when I was pregnant with my first child. And at the time, we had no idea how this opportunity would change our lives forever. Now what? We go to the source. Find out what it takes to build your dream squad. Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I have worked as a social worker for many years. I've worked with lots of kids who end up coming into government foster care. Those kids have always gone through some form of trauma, whether or not it's uh, trauma that's happened in their own home, abuse or neglect or other things that have happened. Um, but then there's also the trauma of having to move out of your home and move into the home of somebody who you don't know, a new family. So today I want to talk about how we can support kids who are in foster care and recognize that some of their behaviors may be a form of resilience that they're using because of the trauma that they've experienced. So for example, if I'm thinking about a baseball coach and he has a player on his team who maybe is being aggressive towards the other players or argumentative with the coach, it could be that that child is behaving that way because they're um, nervous about attachment with a new person because they've had a difficult time with attachment in their own life. Another example might be a child who's afraid to advocate for themselves if they're in a classroom and stand up for themselves because they're worried about rejection or not being supported by the adult who should be there to support them. So those are the kids that we need to really be paying attention to and supporting when we can. I'm really excited to have been invited into the home of the Wilson family. I'm here with Krista Wilson, who's a foster parent, and um, she's gonna give us some advice for how to work with kids who are in foster care. I've always viewed foster parenting as parenting. And I don't treat it as a job. I treat the youth in my home as I would treat my own children. So if there's 10 gifts under the Christmas tree for one child, there's 10 gifts under the tree for all children, no matter what my budgeting is or what have you. Um, I just treat them all the same. Thanks, Krista. So Krista, when you've um, had children come into your home, my guess is that they've probably gone through some sort of trauma, as I, as I said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm wondering about is how do you support them to be resilient um, despite some of the trauma that they've been through? Well, I, I think every home, in, in, you know, ev every home, regardless if in your foster care or not, um, they, you need to treat them with un unconditional love. Um, you need to a solid routine. You need consistency and structure and respect between the child. You know, of course, as a parent, you demand <laughs> respect from, from your children, but it also goes both ways. So, Krista, what I'm wondering about is if I'm, a, if I'm a sports coach or if I'm a teacher at a school or if I'm someone in the community, maybe another parent, um, and I am having interactions with a child who's in foster care, what are some of the things that you think I should know about their potential behaviors um, just in terms of your own experience? Well, I learned very quickly with our first foster son that surprising um, these children, some of these children, um, is not a good thing. It doesn't always work. Uh, in a positive way. You have to remember that possibly when they were re removed from their home, it was a surprise mm -hmm. to them. So they don't, they don't um, look at surprising as being a positive thing all the time. We, we surprised our, our first son with a, a trip to Whistler and he was not happy with that surprise. We thought it was something amazing. It was just before Christmas and we thought we'd go to a winter wonderland and he, it, it actually worked against us with the, with the surprising um, uh, 
surprising, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That makes so much sense to me because I think about some of the things that kids who are in foster care have to go through. And you're right. Like when they're, when they leave their home, it's oftentimes unplanned and they, um, potentially don't go to the same school and they potentially don't have the same, aren't able to access their friends and their supports that they would have had, had they stayed in the same place. Mm -hmm. And so that unpredictability mm -hmm. that they've already experienced could be such a trigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Krista, when I think about um, kids who are in care, sometimes trauma um, has a way of blocking their ability to learn new information. They get sort of stuck mm -hmm. um, at a younger age or they get stuck um, just being able to, like I said, take in new information. Yeah. So what, is, what are some of the strategies that you can use to, to, do, to deal with that? I think patience plays a really big role um, and, and repetition. And sometimes I think, you know, people think, well, I've already said that, you know, but, and so they think, well, why aren't they listening or, or, or they're not listening and they, and they tend to get angry where, you know, again, the patients would come in and, and just being able to repeat. It doesn't take much to repeat things, even if you have to say it 20 times eventually that light bulb's going to click and and they will will hopefully follow through with it, what they're being asked to do but i i think that you know they, you don't know what what's going on in their like as you said what what trauma is going on or what is going to make them tick so to speak or no i think that that makes so much sense because i think about sometimes um the kids that i've worked with in the past as a social worker they would go and have visits with their parents on the weekend. Um, and it's really hard for them. Mm -hmm. um, or they'll have visits with their siblings or their extended family. And then afterwards, they would go and go to their their sports or they would go to a party and their behavior may be different. Yeah. Um, and so it's just keeping in mind that there, there are other things going on for them. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Krista, how much do you um, recommend that coaches or teachers get to know a child's story like how can they how can they do that and how can that help them being able to support the young person I, I think it's important to to know a child's backstory to a point I think it's helpful but then I I also think that it, it can also could also be be somewhat damaging to a child too that you know you don't, don't necessarily want everybody to know everything about about these these kids because it's you know we all have our secrets and but if there's different little tools that they can find out that will help uh, make them more coachable or teachable um, I, I think that that those little points are important and I, I think even just being um, a parent and going to a parent teacher conference um showing you know showing up and and showing that i'm the foster parent and just the look in the teacher's eyes that it's like okay you know now i've put two things together okay there's a little bit more understanding here mm -hmm. that it's not just you know little bobby's you know mum that's coming in it this is a foster parent that's coming in that's there's more of a story here. And, and I think that that's almost enough said mm -hmm. without having to give pieces. Yeah. And just respecting that young person's privacy. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And oh, I think any young person, but particularly if you're in care, you most likely had to tell your story many times and you have a lot of different professionals that are in your life. Mm -hmm. And that can be really hard on a kid. Yeah. Especially when they just want to be living sort of a typical life. Yes, and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Krista, tell me what you feel is the most rewarding thing um, that you find in fostering. I think just their successes, you know, when you, you know, they've possibly been told that they would never achieve something, uh, you know, and unfortunately it does happen out there that these kids are, are told you will not it, go beyond this, you will not, you know, achieve this and to watch them persevere and push forward and 
get awards uh you know these these little again little victories but they're huge in their world to be to feel normal you know and feel like they're surrounded by love and support and they are they can achieve things even even though they're not living with their birth parents the people that chose to bring them into this world that they can they that can succeed be, it must be so rewarding mm -hmm. Okay, um, so now we're going to do what's your favorite? Mm. What's your favorite book, movie, or TV show? Uh, right now, I would have to say favorite TV show would be uh, This Is Us or A Million Little Things. Oh, A Million Little Things. I read one. that book, but I haven't seen the TV show. Yeah, This one. Is Us. So amazing, yes. especially all of the elements of adoption and foster care, yeah. and I just draw so much on that show, and it's just, I find so realistic in a mm -hmm. Hollywood way, mm -hmm. but very realistic. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, and the Highly foster piece it. that they do in that one, too, is pretty pretty bang on. I'm pretty impressed. That's, yeah. real, that's good to know for yeah. someone who's been fostering for 20 years. Yeah. Favorite sport or athlete? Well, my favorite sport, not for me to play, but is basketball because of my girls. I, I've never really, actually, my husband grew up, we went to high school together and we, um, he played on the basketball team, but I used to actually go and read a book and not watch him play. <laughs> but now I love the game. <laughs> I love to sit there and scream and yell and cheer and everything else. Awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Oh, uh, I think a steak dinner. Nice. Is, yeah. Hits yeah. the spot. Yeah. And what's your favorite communication hack? I think it would be my ability to rem remember um, a person's face. I don't remember names ever, <laughs> but I can remember a face, even if it's in the grocery store lineup that I've seen somebody or had an interaction with, I can remember a face. How do you do that? I don't know. I just, uh, I must be, if I remember the glasses, if I remember the smile, if I remember the sneer, if I, <laughs> what it is, but I, I just said it, it's a visual. I'm a visual learner, so it's probably, probably because of that. That makes so much yeah. sense. Yeah. Me, on the other hand, I don't recognize faces at all. Yeah. So I'll say, nice to meet you. And the yeah. person will say, well, we've met 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> Super embarrassing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Krista. Okay, this was really you. fun. Thanks for inviting me into your home, oh. too. If you like this video, please let me know by liking it below. Subscribe and share it with your squad. Don't forget to comment below with interview requests and topic suggestions.